Dear student, today you have chosen to read about culinary skills. As you are aware, culinary is a term related to cooking and as you are well aware, cooking requires skill and efficiency. Cooking is both an art and science. The best culinarians in the world are those who have a passion for cooking and possess an artistic insight and unmatchable skills in culinary. Cooking might be simple for those who are interested, but can be a difficult task for those who do not know about it. Nevertheless, the present day modern lifestyle has necessitated that everybody should possess the basic skills of cooking. In a food service, it is more important for the personnel so as to have a successful business. So with this brief introduction, let us move on to the lesson and when, when you complete this, you should be able to know the related terms in culinary skills, how food can be made edible and presentable, view some videos which will help you to master the skills. Let us start by knowing what does the term culinary mean. Culinary means related to cooking. Culinary art is the art of preparing and cooking foods. Culinary means relating to a kitchen or to a cookery and art is described as human effort to imitate, alter or supplement the work of nature. So combining these two terms, we know that culinary art involves creating something unique and beautiful which is completely edible. By definition, a culinary art is defined as the art and science of preparation, cooking and presentation of food, usually in the form of meals. Culinary skill is the skill an individual has for cooking and culinary artists are responsible for skillfully preparing meals that are as pleasing to the palate as to the eye. The history of culinary art is stated to be very old starting from 1553 to 1610 when Henry IV ruled during which time guilds were responsible for preparing foods. A guild is an association of artisans or merchants who control the practice of a craft in a particular town and such artisans were involved in cooking. The dramatic growth of culinary arts was seen during the Industrial Revolution that is from 1760 to 1840 when food service institutions grew to great heights based on the social and economic changes. Antonin Carmi was a chef who specialized in grand cuisine. This was an elaborate style of cooking that focused on making food look and taste incredible. From then on, culinary arts have grown globally in a tremendous way. Now, let us see why is culinary skill important for food production. Well, food needs to be cooked most of the time and even if it is eaten raw, as in the case of fruits and certain vegetables, it needs to be presented in an appealing way and hence culinary skills are needed. Culinary skills improve the taste and food quality. Cooking improves natural flavor and texture of food. For example, roasting of groundnuts or coffee beans, frying onions and puppets improves the flavor of food. Secondly, it aids in destruction of microorganisms. Harmful microorganisms in food are destroyed at a certain temperature for a certain length of time. For example, boiling milk or steamy rice or vegetables. Cooking improves digestibility. For example, cooking softens the connective tissues of meat and coarse fibers of cereals, pulses and vegetables so that the digestive period is shortened and gastrointestinal tract is less subjected to irritation. Cooking also increases variety. By cooking the same food in a different ways, different dishes can be done. For example, rice can be cooked plain or ground for making a batter or powdered so that a different dish may be created. Next, cooking increases consumption of food. Improvement in texture and flavor of food by cooking helps in increasing the consumption of food which meets the nutritional requirement of an individual. 
cooking increases availability of nutrients. For example, trypsin inhibitors present in soybean gets denatured during cooking and hence increases the quality of protein and finally cooking helps in creating food that is nutritionally sound, attractive, valuable and appetizing. Now that you have known the importance of culinary, let us move on to learn the type of culinary skills. Culinary skills can be broadly divided into 1. The skills needed for pre-preparation that is getting the ingredients and food ready for production and the second as the skills needed for the actual process of cooking or the production part. The pre-preparation skills involves a number of techniques like cleaning, peeling and so on. Let us learn them one by one. The first is cleaning. The term cleaning is applicable to vegetables, fruits and many food products. That is some portions of food has to be discarded. For example, withered or discolored leaves in green leafy vegetables. Washing of food helps in removing dirt or other unwanted matter. Washing with 2% salt water removes most of the contact pesticide residues that normally appear on the surface of fruits and vegetables. Next is peeling and stringing. Both these methods involve the removal of non-edible or fibrous portion of fruits or vegetables. For example, peeling of garlic and orange, stringing of beans. Let us now see how to peel a garlic. As you watch in this video, it is very easy to peel a garlic pod without getting the garlic smell onto your fingers. Smack the garlic pod with the palm of your hand, applying a little pressure so that the individual pods separate out. Put them in a bowl closed tightly with another and shake them well so that the peel comes off. This technique is alright when one or two garlic pods are used but for quantity production the following technique can be followed. Smash apart the garlic that is by placing the head of the garlic on the countertop and smash rapidly downward with the heel of your hand. This will separate the head into individual cloves. Place the flat of a wide knife blade over a single claw and smack the knife blade firmly with the heel of your hand and the clove will be slightly smashed and easily separated from its skin. Next, let us see how to peel an orange. Insert the pointed tip of the knife into the skin of the orange at the top. Make a slice across the top of the orange to get started. Then continue by rotating the orange in your hand while you use the knife to cut off the peel in one continuous motion. Continue peeling the orange in a circular motion. The knife should be facing towards you while you peel in a steady controlled manner with a slight sawing motion. Oranges can be peeled and still retain the natural look as you see here. Use a sharp knife to cut the skin into two halves and use the stem of a spoon to cut through it. Remove the inner skin using a knife. Pre-preparation of food involves a lot of cutting skills. Food may be cut for dividing the food into smaller pieces, thus helping in easy cooking. The various cutting techniques are slicing, shredding, julienne, mincing, grating and dicing. Let us first see what is slicing. Slicing is the cutting of food into thin relatively broad slices. In fact, it really is the first cutting technique that we all learn when we first use a knife. Sliced meats, vegetables and fruits are used in many dishes. Slicing may be used to further process to produce other cuts. Slicing is simple and easy and can be done by holding the food and the chef knife firmly and cut straight down using the knuckles of your free hand as a guide. Let us now see how to slice and chop onions. To slice onions, cut off the root end then peel away the skin. Slice in whole round slices and separate them into rings 
or else cut the onion into half first and then slice into half moon shapes. To chop small onions leave the root intact then peel away the skin from the top end. Now cut the onion in half and place each half on flat surface round side up. Next make cuts vertically from the root end but leaving the root intact to hold it together. Then make horizontal cuts across the vertical cuts while you hold on to the roots end firmly. The last cut will be the little root bit and this can be discarded. Rough chopping can also be done making about 3 cuts vertically across each onion and then 3 horizontally. Now let us see what is shredding. Shredding means to cut it food into thin slices or pieces using a sharp knife, food processor or a grater. Cabbage can be shredded. As you see in this video, use a slicing technique to stack a few slices cutting straight down through the stack to create sticks. For matchstick julienne, start with 1 by 8 inch slices and cut them into 1 by 8 inch sticks. To shred food into fine slivers, begin by cutting thin slices, then cut them across in the same way to create a thin strip. Now we move on to our third cutting technology, julienne or alumet. What is julienne? Julienne is a culinary knife cut in which the food item is cut into long thin strips similar to matchsticks. Common items to be julienne are carrots, celery or potatoes and potatoes which we use for french fries. The julienne cut cuts measures approximately 3 by 3 millimeters into 3 to 5 centimeters. Our next cutting technique is dicing. What is dicing? Dicing is a culinary knife cut in which the food is cut into small blocks or dice. This may be done for aesthetic reasons or to create uniformly sliced pieces. Dicing is usually applied to vegetables prepared in this way but it can also be applied to the preparation of meat or fish and also fruits. Line sticks up perpendicular to the blade and slice straight down across them creating cubes. We now move on to the next technique mincing. What is mincing? Mincing is a food preparation technique in which food ingredients are finely divided into uniformed pieces. Minced food is in smaller pieces than diced or chopped foods and is often prepared with a chef's knife or food processor or in the case of meat by a specialized meat grinder. The technique goes like this. Start by cutting the ingredient into thin strips and then dice the strips. Hold the knife handle in one hand and with the other hold down the tip of the blunt edge of the blade. Using the tip as a pivot, raise and lower the blade in a chopping motion, moving it from side to side to mince everything evenly. Scoop up minced ingredients occasionally, flip them over and keep chopping to ensure mincing. Now the following two cuts which I am going to tell is new and it's called as roll cutting. What is roll cutting? Roll cutting technique is used for long vegetables like carrots or zucchini. It makes attractive chunks and exposes more of the surface area of the vegetable. Hold the blade perpendicular to the board and cut straight down on the diagonal. Then roll the vegetable a quarter turn and cut straight down again at the same diagonal angle. Continue rolling and cutting alternately in this way all along the length of the vegetable. Now parallel cutting. What is parallel cutting? This technique is used to cut broad thin slices of meat or vegetables. As you see in this video, use a chopping board and make thin slices of meat or vegetables. Lay the food close to the edge of the board with the fingers of your free hand flat on top of it. Angle the chef's knife 
so that it's almost parallel to the board, slanting slightly downwards. Move it slowly and carefully back and forth to slice the food, paying close attention to avoid cutting your fingers. Now we go on to the next technique which is used in pre-preparation very often which is crushing. What is crushing? This technique is used to crush ginger or garlic. To crush ginger or garlic, place it near the edge of the cutting board, lay the knife blade flat over it with the blade facing away from you and with the heel of your free hand, give the side of the blade a good whack, being careful to avoid the edge of the blade. Tenderizing is a pre-preparation technique. What is tenderizing? Tenderizing is a technique for breaking down collagens in meat to make it more palatable and tender. There are a number of ways to tenderize meat, namely mechanical tenderization, such as pounding or piercing. The tenderization that occurs through cooking is as in bracing the food. To do tenderizing of meat, use the blunt edge of the chef's knife to tenderize meat by pounding it in crisscross pattern or it can be done by turning the blade on its side and slapping the surface of the meat. This is tenderizing and it makes the meat tender. Now let us move on to see how vegetables can be diced. Vegetables can be diced by cleaning the first the chopping board and knife Peel the skin of the vegetable if necessary and discard it. For round vegetables like carrots and potatoes, cut in half lengthwise and lay cut side down on the cutting board. This will keep the vegetable from rolling. Cut the vegetable lengthwise into even slices and stack the slices, cut them into long sticks. Gather the sticks and cut them crosswise into cubes. Make sure to get the cubes as even as you can. To dice a tomato, cut in quarters vertically through the stem. It's not necessary to cut the stem out just yet. Cut away the inner pulpy part of each tomato quarter, cutting away the stem with it. Discard it or save for another use. Slice the remaining outer flesh into thin strips and then cut the strips crosswise into dicing. Dicing makes the food very attractive and here are few tips for dicing. The dicing technique will vary for specific vegetables. You must always be aiming to get the vegetables which you can easily cut into cubes. Vegetables made of flour like broccoli and cauliflower are not typically ideal for dicing but can be broken into florets. The best clearest dice is made with a sharp knife. The sharper the better the dice is. Fruits are mainly eaten raw and hence skills to make them edible is a must. So now you can see a video on how to core an apple. The first step is to set the apple on the cutting board with the stem facing up. Insert a short thin bladed knife directly into the top of the apple. Push the blade all the way through the apple and make sure that the knife pokes through the bottom as you can see the blade. Pull out the knife, repeat this process three more times around the center of the apple and make four incisions to create a square around the center of the apple. Insert the knife back into one of the incisions. Drag it from the first incision to the second and all the way through the other two incisions until you have completely cut around the apple's core. Remove the knife and push out the core with your thumbs. Push it down through the apple until it pops out. Now next, let us see how to score a pomegranate. Roll the fruit first to loosen the seeds. Score around the middle and tear it open into halves. Hold each half over a bowl, seeds facing down and tap the skin with a wooden spoon or any hard handle so that the seeds are released after a little squeezing. So far you have seen the skills needed for cutting fruits and vegetables. Now we shall see some skills needed for baking. In baking, 
sieving the flour is an important step and as you can see here you can sieve the flour very easily sieving is done to remove coarse fibers and insects it is also done in preparing cakes for blending of flour with baking powder now how to sift flours take the strainer and pour the flour into the strainer make sure to position the strainer just over the bowl you are using to collect the flour tap the side of the strainer until all the flour falls into the bowl sifting can also be done using a fork or a wire whisk stir the flour in circular motions using a fork or the wire whisk place the correct amount of flour in a bowl take a wire whisk or fork and place it in the flour swirl the whisk or fork in quick circular motions now let us move on to the other technique in baking and in baking egg is an important ingredient and either the whole egg or egg white or egg yolk may be used frequently to separate egg yolk from egg white it needs skill and as you see in this video it can be done very easily next is coating coating refers to covering a food with a layer of crumbs flour or other substances before cooking it there are different ways of coating a food the first one is breading the food product is first dredged with flour and then dipped in egg mixture liquids and in crumbs the second is battering battering is dipping the food product in the batter and the third is dredging dredging is passing a food through a fine dry or powdery substance such as bread crumbs powdered almonds etc in order to coat it for the preparation of flesh foods like meat chicken and fish marinating is practiced what is marinating marinating is soaking a food in a marinade to add flavor or to tenderize it or both a marinade is any liquid which is made up of to for the purpose of marinating let us see how to marinate meat select a cut of meat cut nicks into the steak that penetrates about halfway through the thickness of the meat so the marinade can permeate more quickly mix your marinade place the meat into a container and add the marinade refrigerate the meat and marinade put the sealed container in the fridge for 2 to 24 hours depending on the strength of the marinade so far you have learnt about culinary skills and how it is important in a food service to satisfy customer expectations you have also learned a few techniques and i hope this lesson has been a useful one for you and by practice you can master these skills in later time seeing the videos thank you and goodbye student